Hi quilters! In today's video I'm going to show you how to turn a composition book into a cute little journal using just a little bit of fabric, some scraps left over, two and a half inch strips, and a little bit of batting. I'll also show you how to make this tie so you can keep the book closed together and everything will be tucked inside. I use my journal to keep track of all my quilting projects, especially my projects of the month and blocks of the month. It's just leftover batting and the rest is made from leftover two and a half inch strips of fabric and the composition book. Let's get started. Start with a piece of batting about 12 inches by 31 inches. I'm using a warm and natural scrap leftover from a quilt. Next, you'll need 13 to 16 strips that are two and a half inches wide by at least 12 inches long. I decided to use some fun stripes, but you could use anything you want. You'll also need one rectangle that measures six inches by 10 and three quarter inches. You won't see this piece of fabric in the finished item, so you can use anything. You need six strips of solids or darks that also measure two and a half inches by 12 inches. And finally, you need a composition book. You can pick these up anywhere you can find office supplies. There's just a little bit of cutting before we can start sewing. Cut each of the solid or dark strips in half lengthwise so they will measure one and a quarter inches by 12 inches. You get two strips per cut. I'm using a bunch of different fabrics for these darks, but you could choose just one fabric if you wanted to. Use a walking foot for the best results when making the journal. It will pull all the layers through the machine at the same rate. The walking foot has feed dogs on top to match the ones that are underneath that help pull all the fabrics through together. Find the center of the batting piece and mark with pins. We're gonna start with one of the two and a half inch strips and two of the one and a quarter inch strips. Lay the two and a half inch strip right side up on the batting, centering it on the pins and then pin it into place. Trim off excess fabric as necessary. With right sides together, put one of the one and a quarter inch strips on the two and a half inch strip matching raw edges. Sew through all of the layers with a quarter inch seam allowance. Do the same thing on the other side so that you have a one and a quarter inch strip sewn onto both sides of the two and a half inch strip. You're going to press towards the one and a quarter inch strips. I started with strips that were a little bit longer than 12 inches. I just picked things out of my strip bucket and whatever length they were, I just didn't bother cutting them until I sewed them in place. When I'm working on smaller projects or blocks, I like to use my smaller portable iron at the sewing machine. It speeds up the process of making whatever I'm doing because I'm not getting up and down to go to the ironing board. I miss out on some steps, but I can hopefully finish more projects. Next, we're gonna add more two and a half inch strips on both sides of the center unit. We're gonna keep alternating the strips and pressing until the whole batting piece is covered. Make sure you press after every strip that you add on. This journal cover could be made with any size strips, really. You could substitute in some spare blocks, some embroidery work, any kind of textile, really. You can also add in some rows of quilting, quilting stitches or specialty stitches on the fabric for fun. Feel free to experiment and get creative. Make sure you stay to the end of the video. I'm going to share some ideas for how to use your journal and show you some of the pages from my journals from the last couple years. One of the things I love to journal about is my quilting projects. I like to record my inspiration, the fabric that I'm using, any kind of labels I've gotten from the fabric, and pictures of the finished projects. And when possible, I like to get a picture of the person who receives the quilt and make sure I get a picture of them with their quilt.
You can also add a pocket on if desired. Fold an extra two and a half inch strip piece in half and place it underneath the second to last strip that will be added. Match the raw edges on the sides and the bottom edge and pin it in place. The fold should be kind of in the middle. Put that second to the last piece in place and sew through all the layers. You go to press the strip, you're also going to want to press the pocket so that it is even with the strip. You can make as many pockets as you like. You could even make pocket on everyone. You just want to make sure that they all face the same direction. If you'd rather have one big pocket than a bunch of little pockets, you can do that too. You just want to make sure you've sewn all the strips into place first and then take two squares, say five inches by five inches, right sides together, sew all the way around, leave an opening to turn it right side out, clip the corners, turn it right side out, and then top stitch it into place. When most of the strips have been used and the batting is covered, trim the piece to measure 10 and 3 fourths inches by 29 and 3 fourths inches. Center it so both ends look similar. I ended up with smaller strips on both ends of the striped fabric. Bind each end with a strip of fabric. Fold the strip in half, matching all the raw edges, and sew it onto that last strip. You will press it when you're finished sewing, and then flip it around to the wrong side so that it'll be attached to the batting on the back. You can top stitch it from the front. I like to use an open toe foot when I'm top stitching from the front so I can see where I'm stitching. I could have used my wonder clips here to help hold this together as I was sewing it, but since it was such a short length, I just folded and sewed as I went along. If you don't want to bother with doing a binding, you could trim the piece down to 10 and 3 fourths by 29 and 3 fourths before you add the last strip, and then add the last strip, then flip it around the edge and top stitch it down instead of adding an extra piece of binding. If you want to add any trims, ribbons, or patches, do it now before we do this next section. Now it's time to fit it to our composition book. Fold in the ends with the binding in the center. They should be almost touching. The batting is facing out. Place the composition book between the folds to test how it's going to fit and make adjustments as necessary. Pin one side only. I always check the outer fold to make sure it's laying flat and not bunched up. Make sure it's even on both sides. Using quarter inch seam allowances, sew along both edges, back stitching at the beginning and the end. Sew both sides, and then we're going to test to make sure the book fits inside. Don't worry if it's a little loose. When you turn it right side out, the seams will eat up some of that space. You just don't want it tight at this stage. I sometimes will do basting stitches here, and then if I try it on and it fits, then I'll go back in and sew over those basting stitches with my regular seam allowance stitch length. Once the first side is finished, then you can go ahead, put the book in, pin the other side, and sew it into place in the same way.
it's time to add the liner to cover up raw edges in the center. Center the 6 inch by 10 and 3 quarter inch rectangle with the right sides down onto the cover and sew it into place using a quarter inch seam allowance. There is no need to turn the raw edges down on the sides because they will be covered up inside and no one will ever see them. I do backstitch at the start and the end of this seam just to make sure those seams will stay in place. Flip the centerpiece so it is right side out and press if needed. Trim off the corners just a little bit to reduce bulk. Now you can flip out one of the ends and make it right side out. Make sure the corners are nice and crisp. Kind of put your fingers in there, feel around to make sure it's going to lay flat. Then you're going to do the same thing with the other side. You can press it with an iron if you want, or you can just flatten it with your hands. When you put the book inside, that's going to help it lay a little bit flatter than what you're seeing right now. The piece that's in the middle ensures that there are no visible raw edges. That's what makes it so nice. Find the pocket if you added one. This is the side where the front of the composition book goes. Fold the composition book so the front and back covers are almost touching. Put in one of the covers about two inches and then do the other side before you go any further. You have to put both the front and the back in at the same time. It takes a little wiggling to get the cover on. Just try to have the seams on the outside of the cover to help it lay a little bit flatter. Now all that's left to do is to make a tie to hold it shut when you're not using it. Start with a two and a half inch strip that's at least 40 inches long. Fold it in half and press. And then you're gonna open it up and fold in the raw edges to meet in the center at the fold line. I usually put pins in place to help me position the fold to make it a little easier, it's like having an extra hand to help me keep everything in place. When you're done with this part, you will fold it in half and press it once more. We're going to start on one end and we're going to sew close to the edge on both sides of this strip. I start by sewing a diagonal line, backstitching once the whole way to make sure I have three lines of stitching. Then I sew close to the edge and I'm going to do that on both sides. When I get to the other end, I will do another diagonal line. On both ends, you're going to cut close to the stitching line. It'll kind of have a raw edge, but that stitching will hold the rest of it in place. The tie I made is so long I can wrap it around the journal twice before tying. It doesn't need to be that long, you can make it any length you like. And with that, our journal is ready to go and start recording all of our memories and fun things. My most precious things aren't things, they are family and friends and memories. And these journals are where I write it all down so I can relive it and remember. If you'd like to make your journal from a single piece of fabric, you can see our video from last year. We'll leave a link in the description below. And even though this one looks like it's two different fabrics or four different fabrics, it's actually just one piece of fabric that I used to make the journal. This is the one I've already started for the year 2024. And I like to document my quilting projects, family event, silly everyday things, pictures of the dog, pictures of vacation, news from friends, and things happening around town and I try to keep it really positive and reflective. And I've also used it to write down 
my 12 projects. So I've got it all listed in there. And then every month I kind of check back and fill in what month I'm doing that project. And if I completed it, I will add on at the end that I completed the project and make a big smiley face. This is my journal that was for 2023. And I'll just show you a few pages to see how I set it up. I use a lot of stickers. I take labels off of things. I print pictures on the printer from, just right from my phone. Here's um, a little diary of how we built our shelves and moved things around in the store. This is a day we had at the Minnesota State Fair and we have some stickers, our ticket, pictures of the family, the fun stuff we did. This is the day we went to Top Golf and had a good time and we also went to the Centennial Lakes Park mini golf putting course. I put in here a reminder of the quilts that I donated so I can keep track of what I've given to who. This one, I actually put some fabric on this page and that was when I did this project. I have the label from the jelly roll and then I put in just a little piece of each of the fabrics. So I've got a little record of what this is made out of. This book, actually, I had it I had made it with ties and I just decided to make this year's a little different and that's why this one has a big tie. These seemed a little flimsy after a while. I throw in flyers, stickers, fabric, pictures, souvenir type things, cards, ribbons, anything I can think of. And I love looking back at the year when I am uh, at the end of the year, I just kind of reread the whole thing and look back at it. And if I want to put something big in it that I don't want to tape down, I usually just make a little pocket out of a couple of the pages. I've taped it here, put some stickers on it to decorate it, and then I just slip whatever I want into the pocket. These would also be useful for lists or idea notebooks. They make great gifts for family and friends. You can even include a set of markers or pens and some stickers to make it extra special. I made my first journal in 2021 and loved doing it so much I did it again in 22. And then 23, I had a lot going on. So I actually filled almost two full journals. So we'll see how far I get in 2024. We hope you remember to hit the like button, leave a comment, share with your quilting friends, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and happy quilting!